obviously you're not going to want to create folders here on your desktop. You want to keep things organized. So you guys want to go into Finder. So open up Finder and you're going to see this. So most of you should just go into Documents. And in here, I'm just going to drag these things in here. And there we go. So you guys can keep your folders organized under Documents and not in your desktop. Because keeping things in your desktop all cluttered up actually does slow down your Mac a little bit. So it's better to keep them organized within folders, such as in documents. You guys can also keep stuff under downloads, applications, that would be all your apps. But anyways, let's just go back to documents. And then we're going to keep going with apps later on. I'm going to show you how to delete documents or any file out there on your Mac, which is actually fairly easy. All we have to do is just right click on top of it, move to trash. That's one way. Another way, let me just move it over there. We can press Command Delete. That's also going to delete it. And the final way, let me just zoom out. We're going to drag this. And keep in mind, this could be any type of file for that matter. We can just drag it right on top of trash, let it go, and there we go. To fully delete them. And this is for any type of file, whether it's you're deleting it from an SD card, from a USB stick, external hard drive, from within your Mac you always need to empty out your trash bin. So my trash bin is on the bottom, right hand side, right click, empty trash. Now before I press that, I wanna show you that this is not the only way. You guys can open up your trash bin, so let's just double click on it. And then you're gonna see it right here. You have the option to empty it on the top right hand side. And then you're gonna get this warning about emptying it out, empty it, and there you go. That's how you guys can fully, fully delete any files from your Mac, whether it's a picture, video, anything like that, same thing. All right, so now let's move on to apps right here on your Mac, because there's a lot to go through. And I'm just gonna show you the basics. So going to Finder, under Finder, we can find all our applications right here. It's gonna be your third option. And this is where all your apps are gonna be at. So let me just open this up. These are all the default apps that you guys get with your Mac. There's nothing more. Now there is a folder here. So if I go to utilities, there's gonna be more stuff in here. So just in case there is a folder within where you guys can see even more stuff. But generally speaking, we're taking a look at just your apps here. And I'm just gonna go through them really quick so you guys get a handle of what's what. So first of all, Pages, that's like Microsoft Word. Numbers, it's like Excel. Keynote would be the exact same thing as PowerPoint. iMovie, just to edit videos, which is like Premiere, for example. Uh, GarageBand, you would be editing audio, well, creating music as well there. Then you have QuickTime Player, which you use to play things. You can also record your screen with that. Right here, Apple TV, Time Machine. Time Machine is something that's really good to set up. I do have a separate video about that, because for that, you need to buy an external hard drive. Once you guys get an external hard drive, look into the video that I have about time machines. That's the whole thing, and it's really great to use. Anyways, Apple TV. So from that hub, you guys can play movies, TV shows, and all that stuff. So again, that's a hub. It's going to take you into channels that you guys can subscribe to in order to play all these things, or even buy movies and anything like that. And the last main thing I'm going to show you would be your mail. You guys can just adding your Hotmail, Gmail, all your accounts under there. So you guys can just answer all your emails all in one app. If you guys have an iPhone or anything like that, it would be the same thing pretty much. Anyways, that's a quick look into the apps that come pre-installed on your Mac already. If you guys want to download more apps, you can do it from the App Store, but not all the apps that you may want to install on your Mac will be in the App Store. That's fine. Just go ahead and go into Safari. So here's Safari. That would be your web browser and you can download any from there as well. It's just gonna be a slightly different process, but regardless, they're all gonna end up in your applications folder as well. Which by the way, if you guys do want to download any apps from the App Store, you do need your Apple ID. So if you didn't create one for any reason, now would be the time to do it. Anyways, next up, what you should know is on the top right hand side of your screen, you're gonna see your time. If you click anywhere here, and you're gonna see this because this is the first time you're opening this up. You guys can modify this as much as you want. So I'm just going to click on that X and then we're going to see all these things. You don't need this. You guys can take off and modify this as much as you like. So if uh, you just scroll down, so with two fingers, just uh, scroll down. You're going to see this where it says edit widgets. If you don't scroll down, you're not going to see this, by the way. 
uh, click on edit widgets and then from here we can go on and add any widgets or take out any widgets. They're pretty easy to take out. So right now that we clicked on edit widgets, we can go on and delete any of these. And that's just by going on into this right here on the top left hand side, clicking on it and that's going to delete it. So let's say we delete everything. There we go. We can just drag and place any of them in here. So here are all the widgets that I could add. And no, you don't need to delete them all in order to add any. I'm just showing you how to delete widgets. But to add any ones, any widget for that matter, just click on the widget first. Then see which one, which look you like. So it could be like something really small, which looks like so. It could be something more extensive, such as this one. Really big. You can also add photos, for example. You can add in reminders. That's going to be useful for, I think, most people. Uh, weather, depending where you live, it's going to be very important. And then there's stocks and all that other stuff. So we can add in pretty much anything. Battery is very important, actually, because then you can see the battery of your Mac. Although we can also see that up here anyways. But this one tells you what percentage. So it's kind of nicer to see it that way. Plus, let's not forget that any other batteries that you hook up to your Mac or connect it, such as any headphones, wireless headphones, you would see the batteries here as well. So that's kind of nice. So again, right here, you guys can see all the widgets that you can add, weather, tips, stocks, shortcuts, screen time, so many, so many things right here under widgets. We can go into all widgets, it's gonna show us every single thing and every single type of view for each one of them. So we can add them right here on the side. So again, I'm just scrolling through so you guys can see everything that you could add. The only one that I wouldn't add is shortcuts. I see that kind of a waste, but it's all up to you guys. Anyways, so that's how you guys can modify this. Let me just click out. We're gonna leave it as is. We're gonna go ahead and put okay. That's just because of the weather. Now let's say you guys want to keep your widgets on the screen the entire time. So you don't wanna click here and just have to click there. You guys can actually move these widgets onto your screen to be there every single time you turn on your Mac. So and all you have to do is click on it, drag it onto your desktop. It's that simple. So click on it, drag it to your desktop. If there's something missing from here that you don't want, same thing, you can just go ahead and get it from here. So it's just the time. I can drag it on here. And from there, I could drag it on later on. If I want to, I can drag it on here on my desktop. And that's it. So now I don't have to click there in order to see my widgets. I can actually move them around in certain areas, not everywhere on my Mac. And I can keep them there. So I can keep these here forever and I can move them anytime that I want. So again, they could be in the middle of my screen or almost anywhere on my screen. And if I want to delete them, so let me just get that out of the way. I just like, clicked on it by mistake. I can just go into edit widgets again. And then you guys see that minus sign? Yep, on the top left hand side, just click on it and you got rid of it. Or yeah, I could just move those back into here as well on the right hand side. So that's how you guys can mess around with widgets on your Mac. Now for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all that stuff, the quick way would be on the top right hand side. We're gonna see this, just click on it and you're gonna see all of these options. So from here we have our Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, focus. That's just so you guys don't get any thing popping up on your screen telling you, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that. You guys can just set it up so uh, nothing gets in your way. Play music, sound, display. You guys can mirror your screen, but that's another video, a little bit more advanced. AirDrop, you might be using this a lot if you guys have other Apple products especially, because using Bluetooth, you guys can just AirDrop things to other devices. So I can transfer a picture to my Mac or a picture from my Mac to my phone using AirDrop, for example, or to my tablet. But again, that's just another video. It's actually pretty easy because for AirDrop, all you guys have to do is going to find there. And then from here, there's AirDrop. You can find anything that uh, is using AirDrop and just drag it onto that person, for example. But again, another video, another day. So right now I just showed you the basics for your Mac. Uh, in order to add any emails to your Mac, all you guys have to do is just go here into your mail and you can add them there. You don't need to, however. So keep in mind that your email is online. So you guys could access that throughout Safari. It's just a web browser. So you guys could go to gmail.com and just hit up your emails from there as well. 
you don't need to go into there. But if you like to keep something in an app, you guys could set this up. Setting it up is really easy. All you guys have to do is click on it. And then from here, it's going to ask you right away, what do you want to import? So it could be our Google account I'm going to continue. Then just type in your password, all your information. And there you go. So your email, it's going to ask you for password, going to add it on and you're going to be done. So it's going to be that easy actually to add anything into your mail. But again, that's not something that everybody uses. Feel free not to. And as I mentioned before, your main browser would be Safari, but you guys can download Google Chrome if you like. And to do that, all you guys have to do is just go here and type in Google Chrome and just download it. And yeah, you would download it from here and not the App Store. There's actually a ton of apps that you would download it from here and not the App Store. Although for some of them, you do have the option to go into the App Store and download it from there. Others, you don't have to. You can just go right here and it's gonna ask you if you guys want to download. It's gonna be, how do you know this is a legit one? Just look at that up here. It's supposed to say something like .com, like google.com and then it's gonna tell you Chrome. That's how you know it's the official one and not an app that's being hacked by somebody and trying to get people to download. So that's how you guys can make sure something's legit online. Just look where you're downloading it from because sometimes the very first option that you guys see would be an ad and those ads are sketchy sometimes. So that's how you guys would do that. I know a lot of people like Google Chrome, that's why I'm mentioning it, but you guys feel free just to use Safari. Safari's fine, that's my main thing. That's what I use. But anyways, these are the very basics with your Mac. This should get you started. If you guys have specific questions, let me know. So one of the last things I'm gonna show you, and that's because this is a MacBook that I'm showing you on, even if it wasn't a MacBook, let's say this was an iMac or anything with a bigger screen, this is useful because this down here could be taking up your space for no reason. So you're going to your system settings. So again, bottom right hand side, system settings, open it up. And then from here, just type in dock like I did right now. And you're gonna see this first option, go into it. I want to show you this. You can make this as big or small as you like. So you guys can see how small it goes. I wouldn't make it small. I would make it medium size. But here's something that a lot of people don't do. And it's to magnify it. So let me just zoom in on what I'm actually doing here. And what I'm going to do is this. What will this do? I'm going to bring it up here so you guys can see a little bit more. Once I scroll through it, it's going to magnify what I'm going to select. And the reason why you might want to turn on this is because this dock right here, we can hide it. So it doesn't take space on your screen. And that's this option right here, automatically hide. Just turn that on. And then you guys can see it disappeared. Let me just unclick. And once I scroll down with my mouse, it's gonna appear. So every time I want to actually open anything up here, I'm gonna see it. But if I just scroll up, it's gonna disappear. So that's good. And you guys can actually even make the top part of your Mac disappear. So even you have even more screen, but that I wouldn't personally do because your time's up there and there's things that you want quick access to. So you don't really want this hidden and then, then having to go up to just be what's up here, but you can, that's an option too in system preferences. I do have a separate video about that, but not something I recommend. However, this part I do highly recommend. And since we're taking a look at this, I'm going to show you how to delete these things. And we're just going to delete them from here from the dock, not delete the app itself. So let's say if I take this out, if I just drag it out, it's going to say remove. There we go. So it's no longer here. However, the app still exists. I didn't delete it. I just took it out from there. So if I go into my applications, it's still going to be here. However, again, if I would do want to get something back there, if I want to add anything to my dock, I can just grab it from here and drag it down. So for example, something that's not down there would be weather. So I can just drag it down here and put it there. Actually, I think it was there. So let's drag something else like boys. I'm gonna drag it down and place it here. Actually, I can place it anywhere really, but for now, we're just gonna place it in between these two. I'm gonna let it go and there we go. So again, that's how you guys can add anything onto your dock or you guys can remove anything from your dock as well just by Going like that, go up a little bit, let go of it, and that's how you guys can remove. So I'm gonna show you that one more time. For reminders, for example, remove. For this, remove. So this guys delete anything from there. All right, so if you guys want to delete an app, um, it has to be a deletable app, for example, such as Keynote. You guys can right click on it, 
move to trash. That's your third option, and that's gonna get rid of it. That's one way. Another way would be to click on it, press Command Delete, or the third option would be to just drag it onto your trash bin. And that's how you guys can uninstall password and done. There we go. So that's how you guys can uninstall any app. Obviously we have to empty out that trash bin, just like you delete any file. There are apps out there that help you delete any apps from here for your Mac. And that's because they find usually folders or anything like that that's associated with the app itself, which is good when there are bigger apps out there. And there's some really complicated apps such as Adobe, uh, which you actually need to download an app to delete Adobe itself. So that's different. That's a different video again, but that's a particular case. For most apps, all you guys have to do is just drag them there. And there's an app that's called App Delete that I use. I, I suggest using that as well because it finds other folders that are associated with the particular program that you're using and that's going to help you out. However, I no longer show that app anymore because people think I'm advertising. I'm not. That's just an app that I use. But you don't have to. You can just drag your apps to your trash bin, type in your password if you have one for your Mac, press OK, and you're done. Or press Command Delete on top of it, password again, OK, and done. So that's how you can uninstall things here on your Mac. It's much easier than a PC, I know. It almost makes it sound like not real. Because on PC, you have to go through your settings and then do it from there, uninstalling in a program. And right here on Mac, we even call them apps instead of programs. But anyways, just empty out your trash bin and you're good to go. Anyways, those are the bare basics for your Mac. Go ahead and have fun with it. I want to teach you one more thing before we end this video, and that's how to change your background. Uh, it's actually pretty easy. Just go ahead and tap with two fingers. You're going to see this. Change wallpaper. Do it from there. That's a quick way. Another way. From your system settings, just type in wallpaper, change wallpaper, and then from here you guys are going to see a bunch of options. So we can go and type this one in, we can try this one out. They're going to change as you click on them, and then you can select whichever one you want. So right now we're just going to leave it there for now. And I want to highlight that you can download any other ones as well, and you can add in your own photos too. So right here you have that option to add photo, but you don't really need to do that from here. If you have your own picture, you can also right click on it and it's going to give you the option to make it your wallpaper. So it's going to be that easy to change wallpaper right here on Mac. And that would be actually it for this tutorial. If you guys have any questions, comments, you guys can write down here in the comments area. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Thank you.